So uh, we will start the last module uh, which is on big data. So big data is a term that I am sure all of you must have heard it. So what is big data? So we will we'll cover very briefly about big data. The first question that everybody has in mind is what is big data? Now big data very simply data which is big. Now the question of course is what does it mean? How big is big? So for example, if you go to sociology, sociologists will uh, do experiments, field experiments, will ask uh, people questions and will take their answers and so on and so forth. For sociologists, maybe even 10 persons data is big because it is very hard to get uh, a complete set of 10 persons who will answer all their questions honestly and reliably and so on and so forth. So for them, 10 is big data. On the other hand, you go to physicists who takes uh, astronomy. So people, people who the, get these images from astronomical telescopes and so on and so forth. For them, terabytes of data is what they get in a day, single day they get terabytes of data. So terabytes of data is, even terabytes of data is not big for them. So petabytes and it's so on and so forth is probably big for them. So there is no threshold of, there is no very nice threshold of saying, oh, after this, this is called big data and below this, this is not big data. There is nothing like, it critically depends on the application that you are talking about. So there, once more, there is nothing concrete about what big data is, it critically depends on the application. Generally, generally what is being done is that what is uh, considered big data is that when the, when the uh, data or the algorithms that will run on the data, this cannot be handled by a single machine. That is typically considered to be big data. So when the data is too big, that, data that cannot be stored in a single machine or that cannot be handled by traditional algorithms because it probably requires too much time, impractical amounts of time or too, many, too much resources that is being considered as big data. But do note that this is all a very fuzzy definition. There is no strict crisp definition of what big data is. It depends very much critically on the application that it is talking about. Okay. So that is uh, big data but and uh, let us see a little bit of uh, what uh, the characterization of big data is essentially. Now this large volumes of data as I am saying the traditional algorithms may not be able to handle it. So essentially you may require new techniques to just to store the data just to just to query handle the data. So new tools because the traditional tools such as the traditional uh, RDBMS systems may not be able to handle it and maybe new architectures of computing systems. So because single machines may not store it, so you will require probably cloud computers or super computers or distributed setups and so on and so forth. So that may be necessitated and so the big data may require all of these things. Okay. Now for big data, what are the, there are certain properties of big data that is being done. So the three most important properties of big data are the, so the big data has this typical these properties which are called the V's, the V properties. So the three important V's, the first three important V's is volume. So big data generally has a very large volume. So when it is very large, even how to load if all the data into one machine or into whatever, I mean the system to load it, index it, query it, etc. That is the problem, this is volume. Then it is variety because big data may not always be pertaining to data that is of a single type. So it is not one schema or one kind of set of things. There may be various kinds of things mixed in a big data setup. So that is the thing. And it can be the, the, the data can be structured like RDBMS or semi-structured like key value stores or completely unstructured like text written. I mean there is no structure, almost no structure. So that is the thing. And the velocity. Now what does it mean to say velocity? Velocity is essentially the data, the big data may be arriving at real time. So it may be streaming data. So it may be as the algorithms process it more and more data keep coming. So and it can be so big that the entire data cannot be stored cannot be uh, stored and then processed upon it needs to be processed uh, faster it need to be processed in real time in a streaming manner so as data is coming in there is some processing going on to it and that is being uh, processed so these are the three initial v's of big data then as happens with any hyped term so big data is very much hyped and there have been some other terms that have been uh, associated with this. So veracity, veracity means whether the data that is coming, the authenticity of the data, the truthfulness of the data, whether it is correct or not, the validity, same thing, whether the data is still valid or the data that one is processing big data has expired. So by the time I write a post into uh, uh, the Facebook and I delete it, 
that post is no longer valid. So, that is the validity. Then visibility, how does one uh, vis uh, how does one visualize the entire data and whether it is visible to all parts of the system? Can everybody for example, see my Facebook post and so on and so forth, they even if uh, all the machines want it and so on and so forth, the visibility is another issue. And the seventh one is the variability. So, how much variety can this big data handle in the single setup? So, how much can it can it be anything or can it does it need to pertain to certain kinds of uh, structure at least, certain kinds of rules at least. So, these are the issues with big data. So, these are the three, I mean the volume, variety and velocity are the three initial Vs and then there are many other Vs that are being uh, talked about. Okay. Now, to for big data systems to happen, we require certain enablers. Enablers meaning certain uh, things have to fall in place so that big data systems can be talked about. Okay. So, first thing is that it requires increased storage space. So, suppose terabytes of data are coming in a day. So, you will require petabyte storage. That, uh, so, 1000 terabytes is uh, 1 petabyte. So, you will require that kind of storage. So, the, there must be those those hard drives or those systems must be made. So, that is the thing. So, there must be available. So, increased storage volume and increased type of uh, increased type of storage, then increased processing power. So, you will require faster and faster machines, more and more uh, and better and better CPUs, etcetera, just it is very understandable. And of course, increased data. So, big data is all about uh, this data. So, more and more data is being produced and that is why it is called big data. Then many times the data is available only over network. So, increased network uh, speed or network capabilities whatever you want to say because data may be streaming in from different networks and you may send it to multiple uh, database because it is a distributed system. So, it must be sent to different places etcetera. And of course, capital or, or, or I mean increased capital essentially money, we require money to store all of these things. So, all this is required to do big data things and, and well why, why will you do big data? There must be increased business. So, the last two things are essentially trying to say that okay, if you one wants to do a big data something on big data, some company wants to do big data, so it must get the profit out of this to so that it uh, will be it is worthwhile to engage in this big data principle. So, that is the thing about uh, big data and these are the enablers of big data. And then uh, there are uh, certain tools for big data that uh, one has to talk about and that is, uh, so there are uh, certain tools that are already uh, out, already available. So, tools for big data. So, the first thing is that hosting for hosting uh, this, uh, for hosting big data, there are these clouds. So, the cloud, the distributed servers or the cloud that are being, uh, so these are already available. So, this is the famous cloud. So, all of you must have heard this term cloud computing and again that is not a very crisp term, but essentially cloud it is a distributed server. So, one can store data and there are examples is that your Amazon EC2 that lets you store lots of data and uh, of course, you have to pay, but it is not free, but at least it lets you do that. Then the file system, there are certain tools, uh, there are certain file systems available which uh, which will let you uh, do these things, but the file system, the properties of this file system is that this must be scalable and they must be distributed. The file system itself must support this data. Uh, traditional file systems may not be useful. So, again HDFS, the file system, this thing that is uh, that supports it, this is already available and then there is a Amazon has its own file system called S3 that is there. Then there is a programming model. So, the programming paradigm itself changes because big data cannot be handled by traditional algorithms maybe. So, that is why the programming model or the programming paradigm needs to change. So, this has to be more scalable and distributed. So, this is again distributed and scalable. So, this the new programming model itself has to has to have these constructs built into it. It, it is not, uh, it must support this naturally. And the map reduce framework, as I've been talking about, map reduce framework will handle this, and the Hadoop is another tool that uh, lets one do all of these things. Then it may require, uh, of course, it will require database support. So these databases uh, may need to go beyond RDBMS, and as we have been saying, this essentially this is all clubbed under this NoSQL term, as we saw earlier. And these are examples are of course your age based 
then MongoDB, uh, Cassandra, and all of these things. And all of these are enablers for big data. So, these, uh, these are tools for big data that this will let you do certain analysis on big data, that is all. And then there are finally, this is operations. So, operations are your uh, what are the kinds of things? So, it must let you do so tools for querying, tools for indexing, tools for doing analytics. Uh, so, one has to do run analytics and this OLAP, etcetera, these are all coming from that uh, uh, querying, indexing, and analytics. And then there are so for this, there is this data mining data mining, there are different data mining tools, etcetera, different, different. So, essentially the entire data mining uh, is proliferating because of this big data things, because it, uh, it has to have this uh, operations doing uh, for this thing. So, data mining, then uh, information retrieval, these. So, so there are, these are all uh, generic terms of course, and these are not particular tools that I am mentioning, because there are many, many tools in these spaces, but all of them essentially can handle as enablers, as tools for doing big data and uh, machine learning of uh, so so machine learning so one particular example of machine learning which is uh, interesting is that there is a mahout tool which is built on top of hadoop so it can do certain machine learning algorithms directly with hadoop uh, database okay so with the uh, hadoop these things so uh, so there are many uh, so many open source tools, so many of them are open source and are free and some of them are not, uh, not everything is free, cloud for example, Amazon EC2, etc. are not free, quite costly, so you have to store this. So that is, uh, so it, it, it has to, so one has to take, look at the application to see whether actually big data is a suitable term for that, whether it makes sense to have big data for that, so the application must clearly define whether what it is big data or not. And just saying that uh, my application has large, large amounts of data, so I will use big data tools or big data applications, that is not fair. Sometimes uh, that is not correct actually, sometimes traditional algorithms can do quite well. So, one has to clearly define and see whether big data is doing all of that. To handle all of these, there is a new paradigm that is coming on, which is, uh, there is a new term that is coming on, which is called the data science. And there is the, there are data science courses and there are data science uh, things that is there. So, essentially to handle all of this big data, cloud computing, all of this together. So, that is the emerging term. So, again current, currently just like NoSQL, big data is not clearly understood what is big data. It depends critically on the application and it is way too hyped, but these are certain enablers, there are certain tools that can be done for that. So, that ends the thing on the uh, of, uh, this course, that ends the, all the lecture modules on the course. So, I hope, uh, I hope all of you uh, have enjoyed this course, I hope all of you have learned something from this course, uh, you have done the assignments uh, honestly and correctly and have learned something from the assignments and the slides have been put up and the assignment solutions have been given. The final certification exam if you are taking, uh, do study for it, it is not going to be easy. Um, and I, but I hope you will all pass and you will get to know and you will have a rough idea at least of uh, what can be there from the assignments. And at the end of this course and at the end of this all, uh, certification exams, you will have a quite a good grip on what database systems are all about, the UG database systems and you will be very much comfortable and confident about handling issues for databases.